Uh, John S. I think just one good year, uh, 2024, under Luke and offensive line recruiting changes significantly. What say you? I mean, I tend to agree. I, I really do think a good product on the field um, from an offensive line standpoint. I mean, you don't have to be like the Joe Moore award winner or anything like that. But do you look like a team that's bringing back four or five starters in a, a, a line that has a lot of starts combined under its belt? Um, you know, you, you see some proof of concept there. I mean, you know, Blake Miller is a guy that has good, gotten a lot of love in draft circles. If he has a big time year, you know, maybe he goes to the draft and it's a, you know, day day one or or maybe early day two pick. You know, you, you have something to point to there. You, you see kind of. The, you, you kind of see the, the development. I mean, you can point to that uh, as a recruiting tactic. It's like you see, we, we bring in Matt Luke and all of a sudden Clemson's offensive line, they, they look much different. They're getting guys, they get guys drafted. You know, Walker Parks is, you know, coming back. He he'll he's in a draft year as well. Um, you know, what if he gets drafted? What if Tristan Lay, you know, the the former five star, what if he kind of puts it all together at left tackle? And then you have it all of a sudden you have three really high caliber guys that are that that might be, you know, day one or day two picks. I, I, I didn't even mention Marcus Tate. Who he's also draft eligible, so I mean, you know, maybe maybe you don't hope that every single one of those guys leaves, but you know, because it does put you in an interesting situation for next year. But it would mean a, a ton from a recruiting standpoint to see, you know, you see, we we bring in Matt Luke. It's not a Clemson problem. We we brought in Matt Luke, and and we all of a sudden we're, you know, we we're producing well. We're putting a good product on the field and guys are being developed. Um, then that's, that's kind of the, uh, you know, that, that would, that would change the perception because last year just, it just wasn't it. They weren't terrible despite what some people would think they weren't, they weren't terrible and they weren't terrible, you know, all the time. Uh, but it wasn't good enough, uh, especially with, you know, when you consider the, the star talent that you have and, the guys that, you know, even when you had injuries, they, they weren't up to what they probably should have been. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of the that's kind of the thing that needs to change. And if you have a, a strong year offensively, you know, that that gives you an immediate you know proof of concept uh, for Matt Luke on the trail. And I, I think that's really all he needs is uh, then I think you'll you'll start to see, you, you know, Matt Luke is good enough to get you in the door for a lot of these kids. And I think that's what we saw this cycle. But as far as closing and ultimately being the choice, you know, that's that's some, that's where you have to have some sort of uh, proof of concept that you that guys are being developed. Guys are getting drafted. And uh, if you do that this year, you have an opportunity to have a really strong data point, a really strong early data point. Uh, Joel says Clemson's offensive line will overachieve if they stay healthy. Yeah, I mean, and I don't even know if it's overachieve because I, I do think that, you know, these players were, I mean, especially in your starting five, these were guys that were highly recruited. We'll, we'll kind of see how the battle at center um, ultimately plays out. But these are guys that were all highly recruited. You know, Tristan Lay, former five star, Marcus Tate, former top 100 kid. Uh, you know, whether it's whether it's Ryan Linthicum or Harris Sewell, they were both highly sought after out, out of high school, both, both blue chip prospects. Um, Walker Parks, I, I think he might have I think he might be the lowest from a high school ranking of anybody on the list, but he was still a four, I believe, a four star. Um, Blake Miller, another top 100 kid. I mean. If if. In the, and then not just that they are, and, and it's not even just their star ranking. They, they've played a lot of football. I mean, four out of the five guys I mentioned. So it, it, it's now it's it, it's it's about you know playing up to that ability, and that's why you bring in a guy like Matt Luke because you you weren't getting that, unfortunately, um, 
out, out of out of Thomas Austin. So, you know, that you bring in a guy that's done it at a high level at multiple programs and at a national championship program. I'll judge the offensive line in game one. Won't be hypercritical even if it's a loss, but if they show improvement and especially sync to Riley's game strategy, they'll get my kudos. Yeah, I mean, it really is. I mean, it really is about the process for sure. And, you know, whether or not they are they're doing the right things in that game. Like sometimes like if you lose a rep because Georgia, you know, you know, the, the guys just flat out be better. I mean, OK, you know, that's you live with that. But if you're losing reps because of bad hand placement, you're losing reps because you are you're, you're jumping, you know, you're jumping early, getting false starts, um, not playing with proper technique or leverage like, you know, stuff like that. Then we're you know, that's that's kind of a, a concern. But if you're losing a rep because you you lost a rep like, OK, and, and that's that's just going to happen. That's that's football. And that's especially in the trenches. That's you, you're going to get you're going to get beat sometimes. <coughs> But it really is about if they are doing the right things. Uh, Jeremiah says the offense we ran under Elliott and Scott and Moore is a really massive, not good offensive line play with the way they tempo and ran motions. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, tempo was a big thing. Uh, they did a lot. You know, you know, what Clemson did really well was recruit guys on the offensive line that could get out and run. They weren't overly physical, like they weren't big players, but they were athletic. They could get out and pull. They could um, they could get out and block on the edge on screens and they and 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 kind of get and also get to the second level uh, quickly like that was kind of the that was the thing they were it was a very finesse type of offensive line like they they were not a overly physical of uh, just move like full of uh, a bunch of movers you had guys here or there but you just you were not built to overwhelm a team. Uh, physically from an offensive line standpoint. And they did a good job of, you know, scheming to that. They were, it was a, it was a very finesse style of offense, but it worked. I mean, it helped you when you have a quarterback, I mean, when you have the, you know, the Taj Boyds and Sean Watson and Trevor Lawrence's, I mean, that, that certainly helps. And you also have, you know, the receivers, you know, that, you know, that can get open quickly. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of the recipe for success. And you also had, I mean, you had really good running back play um, at multiple points. It just, it was a very, it's very complete offense. And so, you know, you didn't need the offensive line that was going to just bully teams for four quarters because teams were scared of, of trying to, you know, teams that tried to overwhelm you from an offensive line, uh, from a numbers and offensive line standpoint, they'd, Clemson would make you pay. It's like, okay, you want to load the box? Okay, just. We'll just throw a screen over to Artavis Scott or, or or Sammy Watkins or or you know na name your your Clemson re receiver Amari Rogers. Um, uh, you're, you're gonna oh you're gonna leave your corners on an island to to send more guys. Okay, jump ball to T Higgins, jump ball to Mike Williams. Um, you know New Hopkins. Like it, it, you just you there were so many options, and so you know that's one of the things that you know I, I think you know Clemson is getting its way back to that if you have the wide receiver play that I think you do. Uh, but also, you know, I think you have, you know, the makeup of your offensive line is to is closer to that of a, you know, you have guys that can move guys off of a ball. You have some, some really physical players on, on your offensive line. I mean, Walker parks is a, he's a, he's a, he's psychotic, honestly. I mean, Walker, well, healthy Walker parks is, He's a mover, man. Blake Miller in the run game, especially, he's a mover. Marcus Tate, he can move guys off the ball. I, I, I just, it, it, you have guys that can do that, and you're feeling, and you're seeing what Clemson is trying to shift to from a recruiting standpoint uh, to to fit more of that mold as well. So, I mean, I think eventually you'll get to that point where you have um, the the offensive line to be more of a line of the scrimmage team because you've been that for so long on the defensive side of the ball, but you just, it, you never did it for the offensive because you didn't really have to, but now you have to. Uh, Jay says, do you think Thomas Austin was doing a lot of the shuffling on the offensive line? And do you think Luke will do the same? I, I think there was a degree of last year of just, 
they were shuffling, but it felt like it was kind of out of necessity because you just weren't getting the level of play that you needed to. And you just guys were not. You, and, and the problem was is week to week, you know, guys weren't being consistent. Like, cause you know, at, <laughs> at different points last year, you know, you, you throw in one guy and he plays pretty well one week. And then the next week he's unplayable. Um, I mean, you, when Walker Park, like for example, when Walker Parks went down, I mean, you you kind of went through that revolving door. You had Mitchell Mays thrown out there, and Trent Howard, um, and Harris Sewell at times, and you just you never really got consistent play from week to week from really any of them. So it was like, okay, you, you felt like you found you, you found the answer one week, and then the next week they're you know they're they're getting ragdolled by by Wake Forest three man front, and you're just like, okay, well now what do I do? I mean, I, so. I kind of, you know, I I feel I felt for Thomas Austin at times last year, but also, you know, it's kind of your job to have these guys ready, and you know, especially these guys that have been in the program for multiple years are, are coming in and and just giving you bad football, like that's 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 concerning. Um, you know, left tackle is another example. You know, one week Tristan Lay was the guy, um, and he was playing well, and then the next week is like he. It's not playing well. You got to throw in Colin Sadler, and then he plays well. And but then you're like, okay, maybe Colin Sadler's the guy. And then you give him, uh, you give him the majority of the snaps, and then he doesn't play well. And so it, the consistency wasn't there, obviously. Um, so I mean, I don't think, I don't think Matt Luke will do the same. I, I think, the, I mean, the goal is certainly to to settle on your your five, and you know, having four or five, four of your five guys coming back. Is is uh, is is a big deal, um, and obviously we'll go a long way towards, you know, settling on a five. But I, I don't expect them to. I, I don't necessarily expect to do a lot of shuffling, you know, throughout the season, because obviously if you're doing that, then things aren't going very well. But we'll see. We'll see how things happen early in the season. Georgia will will certainly tell us a lot, but the App State, I think, will be kind of the all right. You know, are we getting what we need to out of these guys or does do we need to, you know, switch some things up? Jeremiah says, I think Luke is going to have a true five and you still got Sadler and Sewell who can go as well. Absolutely. Um, and well, and, hey, you know, maybe maybe Sat well, maybe Sewell especially ends up being one of those five. You know, you, you still have that battle ongoing battle with him and Ryan Linthicum for uh, for center. You know, maybe it's him, and maybe he is the five, and then you have Ryan Linthicum uh, as a backup. You know, we'll we'll see kind of how that that plays out in fall. But ideally, if you can have, uh, you know, Tristan Lay be that five star, and then you have Marcus Tate and you know, whoever whoever it is at center, and then Walker Parks and, and Blake Miller, and you have that that starting group, you know, throughout at least most of the year. Because you know injuries do happen, but if you know some, you know hopefully the injury fairies like smile on you, and you know you you get uh, more of a more continuity from that standpoint uh, week to week. Then you know we could be talking about uh, this group a lot differently than we have been. 